day and welcome to a, another video. That's my vlogmas intro, not my real intro. <laughs> and I was gonna say welcome again. Oh my god, what is my intro? I don't remember my intro. I'm trying to move the books non-discreetly and not have them knock over, but they're obviously going to. If I seem really out of it in this video, it's because I am hopped up on medicine. On cold medicine, because I'm dying of the plague. Which you might know if you watched my previous video. So... I'm a little out of it. I'm sorry if this video makes no sense, but there you go. What? Oh, this is gonna be so fun to edit and all my rambling and me making no sense whatsoever. <laughs> Great. Future Jay, I'm so sorry. Hey guys, it's Jay. Today's video is my top 16 favorite books of 2016. It was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be to pick these because I have a lot of like 4.5 star books and not that many like five star books. I tried to put the books in order from my most favorite to my least favorite. Which like they're my favorite so like really they're still my favorites but I tried to do it in like ordering so I'm gonna start at number 16 and work my way down to number one to my favorite you know my all-time favorite of the year which if you guys watch my review for it you should know what it is because like I was obsessed with that book. Without further ado let us get started. <sighs> so coming in at number 16 is The Girl in 60 by A.R. Tours. This book follows Deanna Madden and she has this urge to kill people and so she locks herself in apartment 6E and she hasn't had physical contact with another human being for over three years. I'm giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I have a review of it. I'm pretty sure I have a review of most of the books that I'm going to talk about so I'll leave them all linked down below if you guys are interested in them. I thought that Deanna was a great character. She was super sarcastic and just really funny and witty to me. I almost dropped the book. The book was extremely fast paced which is what I love in books. It kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time so I really enjoyed it and I recommend this book if you're looking for thrillers. I'm pretty sure it's one of the first thriller books that I read which got me into the thriller genre this year which like thank you because it's my new favorite. I'm obsessed with it. So definitely think it's if you haven't already, I highly recommend it. It's real good. Coming in at number 15 is Flawed by Cecilia Hearn. This book follows Celeste North who lives the perfect life. She's the perfect daughter, the perfect student, the perfect girlfriend, blah blah blah. In her world there's these people who are flawed, who basically break the law and they get branded either their tongue, their hand, the bottom of their foot, or their spine I think. I can't really remember the full logistics of it. But basically if you break the law you get flawed and then you're like not seen as perfect anymore and people can't talk to you and you get certain things taken away from you and certain rights and things like that. And she lives this perfect life and then she decides that she's going to stand up for somebody who is flawed and risk being flawed herself. It's just a book that has a really great message. I have a full review of it if you want to check it out. I'm probably going to say that 20 million times because this video is my favorite. So obviously I did reviews of my favorites. The world that Celeste lives in is so terrifying to think about and it just really makes you think about the big picture of the world you're living in now and how lucky you are. And it's just such a great book. I loved it. It was super fast paced. You had to know what happened next. I believe I listened to it on audiobook actually and it was real good and the evil person in this book is like terrifying and he kind of reminds you of President Snow. I only gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars although I'm putting it on my favorites list as only a 4 out of 5 stars. I think it would have been a 5 star for me if it hadn't had some of the scenes that it had because I have a super weak stomach, the branding scenes, I just couldn't handle them and it was like because I was listening to it on audiobook it was like even more vivid to me because I could like hear her like screaming and stuff in the book so it was like oh my god I need to take a break from this but like the overall message of the book I think is really important and I think that it deserves a spot on my favorites because it was hecka good. Number 14 is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This book follows Camille Preaker and she just got out of a psychiatric hospital. She's a newspaper journalist and she lives in Chicago. She gets sent back to her hometown in order to investigate this murder of two little girls and she realizes that it might not be exactly healthy for her and that things are a little bit too close to home for her own liking. I just remember reading this and being on the edge of my seat and needing to know what happened next. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars because I was able to call who the killer was. It was kind of obvious to me. A lot of people aren't able to call it and they're pretty shocked by the reveal, but I'm pretty good at it because like I'm an investigative journalist myself on the site. Not actually. I've been a 5 out of 5 stars if I wasn't able to call it, but I really liked all the characters. They were all psychotic and <laughs> more crazy than the next one and it just made me happy. It made me a happy girl. It was a good thriller. Coming in at number 13 is The Magician by D.A. Poopa. This book follows Frank Sorello who is a FBI agent who recently retired because his wife was murdered by a serial killer and now the serial killer is back and he wants to stop it before things 
get a little too close to home again. I have a full review of this as well if you want to check it out. But I loved this book. I thought that James, the villain in this book, was so interesting to read from. His perspective was so creepy. And it was just so cool being inside his head because he's basically like this evil genius psychopath and it was just oh so good to read. The book follows three parallel timelines so it was really cool to see how they all eventually intercepted and how things came to be. I would highly recommend the book if you're into thrillers. The only thing that really bothered me was the dialogue which I talk about in my review so if you really want to get into that go check out the review. But he's also coming out with a second book soon. Which I'm going to be a character in so you know your girl is excited for that because like I want to see myself die to be honest I think it would be interesting. So that got morbid but. I gave the book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads so again I did give other books 4.5 out of 5 stars and they were good but I liked this one better and thought it deserved a spot on my favorites instead. The next two books I'm counting as one book because they're technically a series, but I gave them both five stars, so I feel like they should go together, and that is the Summoner Trilogy. But it's only a duology right now because the third book isn't out yet. But it's by Taran Matharu. I loved these books. They follow Fletcher, who is a demon summoner. And can I just say that his little demon is the cutest thing in the entire world, and these covers are gorgeous. He's basically blamed for a murder that occurs in his town, and then he runs away, finds this demon. He shouldn't be able to summon the demon, but for some reason he's able to, and it's basically that journey. I love these books. They were super fast paced. They kept you on the edge of your seat and I just think they're really cute. They were my first like demon books so I like them a lot. Coming in at number 11 is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I listened to this book on audiobook and it was such a cool experience. Just the different voices that the narrator used and just the world just came alive. I haven't read the next two books in the series, which I really, really need to. I absolutely loved this book. I loved Carew, I loved Brimstone, and all the other characters in that other world. I just thought it was really good. I really liked it. The book follows Carew, who is your typical girl. She lives in Peru. She's got blue hair that's like growing out of her head naturally and she doesn't have any parents so I mean like she's not that typical. She's raised by Chimera who are like half human half animal hybrid. She's constantly running errands for her adoptive father named Brimstone who has a shop that kind of sits on both sides of these two worlds. In the Chimera world teeth are currency and they are able to give wishes to people and basically Karu is the errand girl who goes and gathers these wishes and teeth. Karu lives in the human world but she constantly feels that she doesn't belong there. That's when she meets Akiva who is a seraphim who's an angel warrior. The Khmer and the seraphim have been at war for many centuries and Akiva and his brothers and sisters are trying to seal all the doors to the second world. I thought that the writing was really good, it was poetic, I loved it so much and I just think that it was such a good book so it deserves a spot on my favorite. Coming in at number 10 is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I love this book so much. It was my first Rainbow Rowell book. It was a special spot in my little heart. I thought the love story was adorable. And it follows a girl named Eleanor and a boy named Park and they are not very likely to be together but they end up being together and it's just so cute. And Park's mom made the whole story for me. Honestly she's probably the reason I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars because she was just so funny and she made me happy. Coming in at number 9 is Burned by Ellen Hopkins. This book follows Peyton who is in a very religious yet abusive household. She gets caught in a very compromising position by her father and he sends her off to live with her aunt Jay who is basically in the middle of nowhere and that's where she meets a boy and she falls in love and things take off from there. The ending of this book absolutely gutted me. It broke my heart and then like just I can't. Ellen Hopkins man she's got me. Which leads me to number eight which is identical by Ellen Hopkins. This is the first Ellen Hopkins book I ever read. It got me hooked on her writing. I'm obsessed with her now and anything by Ellen Hopkins I will pick up. This book follows twins and it's basically one of them is very loved by their father even though the love is a little bit inappropriate. The second twin feels a little bit neglected and like the love is unfair and it's basically that story. I don't want to give too much away because it like gives the ending away. But like I did not see it coming. I I did see it coming because like I called it but I was like that's never gonna happen but then it did happen and I was just like Pew! that it actually did happen because I thought it was super far-fetched but like oh this book was a wild roller coaster and I highly recommend it. Number seven is You by Caroline Kepneys. I listened to this book on audiobook as well. Being inside Joe's head 
was so creepy but so interesting at the same time. This book follows Joe and he's stalking a girl named Beck but the way that it's written is kind of like a letter to Beck. I have a review of this as well if you want to check it out. I go into more detail but I absolutely loved this book. And like you want to hate Joe because like he's a creepy stalker guy but like you're rooting for him at the same time and it's, it messes with your head. Coming in at number six is the Entire Infernal Devices Trilogy by Cassandra Clare. I finally finished this series and oh, oh my god, my heart is ripped in two. It was sewn back together 20 million times and then ripped into two again by the end of the series. But I am so happy I finally read it. But I absolutely love every single character in this book. Jem and Will and Tessa and just <gasps> my heart. Number five is The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This book follows Ren who was raped at a very young age and instead of telling anybody she decides that she's gonna bottle it up and the story is told from her first year of high school on to her senior year of high school and it's just such a beautiful story. It's so well done and it deals with the topic really well and I think that's a really important story for everybody to read and I really enjoyed it. I listened to it on audiobook so like it was very heartbreaking because you could like feel all the emotions and hear her voice and it was just it was very emotional for me to read but also really good and like five out of five stars you should all read it coming in at number four is vinyl by sophia elaine hansen you guys you, you could have that this was gonna be on the list because like obsession i've talked about this on my channel for a while now since i read it it's been a highlight on this channel i love it so much i think that it's so well done and, and at the beginning of the book it's super confusing i'm not gonna give you a synopsis if you want to look at my review for it go ahead i give a synopsis there but like it's kind of interesting to go into it blind because pretty much half the book you're sitting there like what the heck is going on and then it all unfolds and it's like you're sitting there like oh my god this is so cool this is so good oh my god and you just have to keep reading it and like highly recommend it it's super underrated in my opinion like if you haven't read it which you probably haven't like please read it and also Sophia is like super sweet so you should follow her on twitter too i'll leave her link down below but like seriously follow her coming in at number three is heartless by marissa meyer i love this book i love it so much. I recently read it, I think like a week ago, to be honest. And I fell in love with every single one of the characters. They're all so unique and so adorable. And I just, oh, if you haven't read this book, please read it. It's so well done. It's such a good retelling. I have a review if you want to check it out. This book follows Kath before she becomes the Red Queen of Wonderland. And it's basically her story of how she got there. And it's super entertaining. <laughs> It is easy to call what's gonna happen. I was able to call it from like the first couple of chapters. But it is so worth it because she is such a kick-ass female. She starts off real naive and real annoying, but by the end of it, she is a red queen to the end. And I just, I love it. Coming in at number two is another kind of cheat, but whatever, I'm going with it. And it is the entire Lunar Chronicles series. I have finally finished it. I started it in 2016, I finished it in 2016, and I absolutely adored it. Probably my favorite series I've ever read so far to this date. It's incredible and if you haven't read it already, please do. I just love retellings and I didn't think that I was gonna like this series because I'm not really into sci-fi at all but it's just this this whole series it just makes my heart so happy. It was so good and I just love all the characters and also like Captain Thorne is my bae. I just love him. And also winter is so cute and I go and I cannot wait until the graphic novel comes out. I'm just saying. Finally my favorite book of 2016 is Night Film by Marisha Passell. Recently read this book. If you want to see my like review, check it out because I gush a little bit. But I absolutely love this book. I thought it was so much fun. I love the multimedia. I loved everything about it. I don't have my physical copy because I gave it to Dan. Has he read it yet? No, Dan will read the book. It is so good. I don't know why I put off reading it for so long, but like so happy I finally did. It was so good and highly recommend it. Alright guys, so that was my top 16 of 2016. I loved these books and I cannot wait until 2017 when I can get 17 favorites, which probably won't happen because I'm very picky with my favorites. It took me a very long time to find these 16. I will see you all next year in my next video. Goodbye!